Hello, this is a quick introduction to Singularity and why we use it. And I'm going to do some demonstrations on the difference between Singularity and Docker. So quick, uh, we're going to skip, skip this prerequisite slide. So quick introduction, why use Singularity? So Singularity is a container platform and it allows you to isolate an environment so that your environment is portable and reproducible. So Singularity is used in the scientific community quite a lot because of how it's designed. Uh, and scientists are concerned with uh, reproducible, uh, to be able to reproduce your results reliably. And maybe you're in a situation where you need to run different analyses in different uh, host environments, so different servers. And, and maybe you're making an analytical software that you are providing for your collaborators so and they need to be able to reliably use your software in their own environments which can be tricky so that's where singularity comes in and there's an added advantage where singularity was designed specifically for high performance computing environments so uh, a computer cluster for instance i'll just show a couple of images so you know something like this so so say here, this is a typical sort of uh, scientific uh, research institute's uh, computing environment where you are the user and then you log into a node, a login node where there is a job scheduler that's running in the background. So you can submit your analytical jobs and then the job scheduler will distribute your your computing jobs to the compute nodes where the analysis happens and then you get re your results back and some of the job schedulers could be you know it could your job scheduler in your institute might be PBS it might be slam LSF there's a lot of different uh, job schedulers available uh, there's SunGrid engine and then load level I'm not too familiar with but these are the type of environments that you might be working in as a bioinformatician. Uh, so next slide is, and there are differences. So Docker is the most used uh, container platform. And, but there's different, it's designed for different purposes. Um, Singularity was specifically uh, designed for research oriented HPC environments and and because HPC environments are a shared computing environment, there's usually a system, systems administrator uh, monitoring the entire computing cluster. And then there are the regular users that are using the servers. But the, there are because of the, you know, system, system administrators usually has the, the ad, admin rights, but the regular users shouldn't have those same rights because uh, you don't want a regular user to modify, you know, some of the system files and break the cluster so that other people can't use it or they hog up the resources. And for those reasons, you want to split your your permissions between the admins and the regular users. But Docker was more designed for running services that are maintained by the the systems administrator. So it's not, so you wouldn't have regular users using Docker, for instance. But Singularity has the advantage where regular users can use Singularity containers as, as their own. So you can use a Singularity container as you. I'll demonstrate what this means later. And Docker has a completely separate namespace. So that's why the, you can't have regular users use Docker unless they have root privilege. Uh, and Singularity also, I'll demonstrate this as well, this point where Singularity containers are handled like regular files and directories. And so it's a lot easier for the average bioinformaticians to learn because they're already familiar with Bash. But Docker, using Docker, they Docker has their own uh, user interface where it's, you'd need to learn how to use in order to actually use it proficiently. And so the, the,
the level of what you need to learn before you can get started to using Singularity is a lot lower than Docker. So that's the end of the slides. Now to demonstrate, so here I'm going to first, so this isn't um, a tutorial on Docker and Singularity, so I'm not going to to go into depth about the commands that I'm going to be using, but just to show, I'm going to first get a, I'm first going to get a Ubuntu uh, OS image from Docker Hub. Takes a couple of seconds and that's done. So if I do Docker uh, images, this lists the images that's available in on my computer. And then I can deploy this image into a container, Ubuntu, and then now here I've I'm running a Ubuntu Docker container right now, and if I see if I do my ID, you see here I'm the I'm going to exit. So I'm currently logged in. I'm currently logged in as my YC Park user on my host system, and if I and I'm able to run Docker commands because I'm a member of the Docker group. If you're not a, I'll just quickly demonstrate. User add. Uh, make a home. The shell should be in bash. So I'm creating a new user called hello. Oh, just need to run that with sudo. Already exists. Okay, so I'm going to log in as the the new user that I just created. And if I do ID, you see there's no uh, docker group here. So if I try to run docker commands, docker ps, it says my permission is denied. I'm able to get absolute bin path, uh, docker images. Okay, so this isn't the usual uh, error message that you would get. Maybe it's because I, maybe it's something to do with my path, but that's, that's not the usual permission denied error message that you'll get, but um, if you try to use uh, Docker in your own computing environment where Docker is installed, uh, but you don't have, you're not a member of the Docker group, you will get an error saying you're not able to access the Docker daemon sockets. Okay, I'll move on. So, that's clear. So, I'm going to deploy a Docker container again, the Ubuntu Docker container, and then show you that I've logged into the Docker container, but you see my my user account is root now. If I do ID is root. So I'm logged in in the Docker container as a root user. So this is this is this is an, an advantage in different cases, but not in HPC environments for regular users. You don't want your regular users to use a container as root privilege because you might they might not know some things and accidentally uh, modify the the system files. Obviously, in this example, the file systems are completely independent from the host, so there's there's not much of a chance of accidentally uh, touching something sensitive, but but the system administrators might have deployed the container, mounting the host file system somehow, and then and then letting other regular users use it, and then they might do uh, they might touch something and modify something that's sensitive. So you don't want that. And also, I'm going to run it again. Uh, and this is the file that usually contains the user informations. I'm going to zoom out a bit. You see, there's the root user in this file, and then but there's no other users in, other than the root, uh, other than the system uh, accounts. But in my files, in my home, my host file system, I've actually got a, a different set of uh, users. So I've got the YC Park, that's my current user, and then there's the hello that I just created. 
earlier, but it's they have a completely distinct uh, user namespace. Okay, but with singularity. So now I'm going to get a singularity command uh, container. So I'm going to do a singularity pool. Uh, from Docker Hub, I'm going to get the Ubuntu container again. So while that is loading, I'm just going to show you that this Okay, so Docker Hub. So when I did Docker pool, uh, that's Docker tool, uh, Docker pool Ubuntu. That's getting the Ubuntu image from Docker Hub. This one, this image, and when I'm doing Singularity pool, um, I'm specifying that I want to get this Ubuntu image from Docker Hub. So it's essentially getting the same image, but here I'm pulling a singularity, I'm creating a singularity container from the Docker image. So the difference between singularity images and Docker Im uh, images are that singularity images I said in the, the presentation where singularity containers are handled like files and directories. So this is a file I can do, you know, a, a less and then it appears as a file and I can interact with the container using the singularity command. I'm inside the container right now. And if I do ID, you see, unlike Docker, we're using the same image from Docker Hub using Docker and singularity. But when I logged into the, the container that was deployed from Docker image uh, using my, my YC Park account, once I logged in, it still appeared as though I'm logging into the container as the root user. But here, when I'm going, I'm making, I'm opening a shell inside the Ubuntu container, Singularity container. I'm logged in, but I'm logged in as my account myself. So this, this is the 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 advantage of Singularity over Docker to be used in the. Uh, the high performance computing environments. Each regular user, uh, any regular user can use a singularity container and then they will be running that container as the account, uh, as themselves rather than a root user. So that's, that's basically uh, the essence of what I'm trying to explain, the difference between the two. So before we end, I'm just going to quickly show one more thing. So, so now for the reason why we might use uh, Singularity Container. So there's the R base container where I do have, I'm going to go back into my host file system. And then I do have R installed. The R version that's installed on my computer is 4.1.1, but say I had something, uh, I had a software that is not compatible with 4.1.1 and I needed an older version of, of R. So say 3.4.4, uh, this one. So what I would do in this sort of situation is uh, singularity pool from Docker Hub, I would get our base 3.4.4 and that's going to download. It might take a while. But by doing this, I don't have to install the lower version of R on my system. And if I if if I want to have multiple versions of my uh, R on my system, I would need to manage them effectively so that it doesn't conflict with anything that I might run in the future. So so for some 
uh, for instance, some of my software might be running in 4.1.1, but some of them in an older version, but I would need to make sure that they don't conflict each other uh, later. But by using singularity containers, I can, I can isolate those situations where one, one thing might run in one container and then the other thing might be running in another container and my host system will be clean. Uh, so I don't need to worry about these conflicts happening. Let's just wait a couple more seconds. And the container is finishing off. I think it's a big container, so it's taking a while. Okay, now that's done. So the R version is installed, the container is installed. So my host system R is 4.1.1. But if I do singularity exec and then R base, I will explain what these commands are in a different in the following videos. But here I'm just running R inside the container. And here I've got R 3.4.4 running now. So uh, in later videos I will I will go into more depth about uh, how to package things so to make your own environment. Uh, your own container but that is the essence of what I wanted to explain uh, before we go again I will just quickly demonstrate where you can find more information so in Google just search singularity container and then the scilabs.io here you can find uh, what you so it's directing me to a older version of the the user guide but if you go to scilabs.io uh, just remove that so go to scilabs.io and then if you go to docs you can go to the user guide and then here there's the introduction to why you might be want to why you might want to use Singularity in more depth. And uh, I'd recommend you read the introduction. So the current version is 3.9. So the introduction gives you a good overview of why and where you would use Singularity. And then I want to direct you to the, the Security and Singularity page where it goes over, especially the uh, set using set UID user privilege model of this part so there was I think maybe it's just the top yeah uh, disclose vulnerabilities no background group yes so so the background part so this is the this contains the information that I just explained where um, how the the user accounts are handled in singularity containers so so the two so introduction and the security background uh, section are good places to read to start off with on why you would use singularity okay that is it uh, thank you uh, if you can you can leave a comment if you have any other questions I, I'll try my best to answer them okay thank you